Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. What am I think? What am I think? You're listening to Popeye News Links. This is the Admiral Tibet who I represent. And remember, the time is so serious. Contankerous and dangerous. This is Popeye News Links. Greetings, greetings viewers and subscribers. In today's journey, we are driving along the elegant corridor of Montego Bay. And if you didn't know, the area between the Rosal Great House to the Donald Sangsa International Airport is known as the Elegant Corridor. In this area, there are a number of notable resorts and golf courses. So continue to sit back, continue to relax and continue to enjoy this journey with me and device not come back yet <laughs> yeah man the flow is still the power so just bear with me all right now in this first incident this one took place yesterday morning saturday december 16 about some minutes after six o'clock it took place at campbellton gardens in the petersfield area in the parish of westmoreland our information is that a 75-year-old businessman and his wife, they were at home. The man, he was on the outside when he was surprised by four hoodlums who were armed with guns. The hoodlums, they took down the man and used his shoelaces to bind his hands behind him. They then took him inside the house and proceeded to rob both him and his wife of a large sum of money, both Jamaican and Canadian currencies they robbed laptops and other valuables as also the man's licensed black and chrome smith and wesson nine millimeter pistol and a quantity of nine millimeter rounds the hoodlums they then made good their escape just like that now licensed firearm holders please take nothing for granted Ah boy. Now, this next incident, it took place late yesterday afternoon. Saturday, December 16, about 6 o'clock. It took place along the Martha Bray Main Road in the parish of Trelawney. Our information is that a man, his name is Mr. Alfonso Seaton. He was born on September 19, 1946, 77 years old, and he was living at Martha Bray District. Our information is that Mr. Seaton, he was riding a bicycle. On reaching at the Holland Road intersection, Mr. Seaton, he turned across the road. As a result, the bicycle, it hit into the left side of a Toyota Voxy that was coming in the opposite direction. As a result, Mr. Seaton, he fell from the bicycle onto the asphalted main road. He received serious injuries and he was rushed to the Falmouth Hospital by the driver of the vaccine that he collided into where he was admitted in a serious condition. But minutes after 8 o'clock last night, Mr. Seaton, he died whilst being treated. Sad indeed. Now in this next story, we are learning that a man, his name is Mr. Pringle Farkerson, but he was popularly known as Errol. Errol is said to be about 66 years old and he was employed as a caretaker for a property at Chester Avenue in the Iron Shore area of St. James. Errol, we are told that he is originally from Flankers in St. James. We are told that Errol, he lived in a room downstairs and tenants are living on the upstairs. Our information is that on Monday, December 11, Errol, he was seen in the yard coughing Heavily, he went to the doctor where he was given medical treatment. He was not seen since then. We are told that Errol's employer tried to contact him via telephone but without success. On Friday night, December 15, about 9 o'clock, Errol's employer went to the house to check on him. Errol, he was seen lying in the bed in the room that he occupied naked and in an advanced state of decomposition. As a result, the police were called in and they commenced investigations. 
We are told that the scene was processed and there was no sign of a break-in. Now, so far, the police, they are not suspecting any foul play, but a post-mortem examination will be done to ascertain the cause of death. Sad indeed. In this next story, on Saturday, December 9, I broke the story. I told you that Tyrese Hunter, also known as Bobby, he is 20 years old. He was arrested and charged by the St. James Police for the role he played in the contract killing of 34-year-old Akeem Robinson. Akeem was shot and killed on Thursday afternoon, November 23, about 2 o'clock on Fustick Road in Montego Bay. Akeem, he is from Burn Savannah in the parish of St. Elizabeth, but for years, he has been selling on Fustick Road. I also told you that it was a female who Akeem was involved with who put out the hit on Akeem. I also told you that CCTV footage captured the killers and that's how Tyrese, also known as Bobby, was held. I also told you that Bobby, he was leaking like a bus pipe. Now, from all indication, it seemed as if Tyrese, a.k.a. Bobby, is from a family of hoodlums. There is one of Bobby's brother on your screen. His name is O'Brien Hunter, but he's popularly known as Birch. Birch is now 23 years old, and he was once on the St. James Police Most Wanted list. Birch, he was held by the police on Christmas Day last year, and he was charged for the killing of Semio Shah, popularly known as Isis, and five-year-old Tavoy Cummins, and the injury of Tavoy's father. So, both brothers, Bobby and Birch, they are now in jail on murder charges. The other hoodlum who carried out the hit with Bobby, in fact, the other hoodlum is the shooter. It was Bobby who rode the bike. The shooter's name is Andino Burnett, but he's popularly known as Dino. Dino is only 19 years old. On the early morning of Saturday, September 16, about minutes to 6 o'clock, a team of police officers were on patrol in the Irwin area of St. James when Dino, he was seen sleeping on a veranda of a house. He was searched and a Ruger 9mm pistol affixed with a magazine containing six 9mm rounds, was found in his waistband. As a result, Dino, he was arrested and charged on firearm-related charges. He went to the gun court in Montego Bay, where a judge saw it fit to grant Dino bail. Dino, he was supposed to go back to the gun court on Monday, but he did not turn up because he know that he's wanted for murder. You see, <laughs> you see some of these judges? I may talk about from Judge Psycho come right down. <laughs> Boy, may I tell you. Now, this next incident, it took place Friday night, December 15, about 11 o'clock. It took place at Roundwood District in the Bushy Park area in the parish of St. Catherine. Our information is that residents of the area they heard gunshots being fired. When the smoke was cleared, they went and made checks. A man named Haroon Harper. On the 7th of last month, Haroon, he celebrated his 44th birthday. He was a taxi driver and he was living at Church Pen District in the Waldaba area in the parish of St. Catherine. The lifeless body of Haroon, was seen lying on his back along the roadway in a pool of blood. The police, they were called in and when they inspected Haroon, he had gunshot wounds to his head. He appeared to have died on the spot. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, a number of 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. Now, this next incident, it took place Friday afternoon. December 15, about 3 o'clock. It took place at Albion in Montego Bay in the parish of St. James. We are learning that a guy, 
His name is Jason Thomas Hewitt, but he's popularly known as Biggie or Skilly. Next month, on January 18, Biggie, he will be celebrating his 24th birthday. Biggie lived at Middle Road in the King Street area of Montego Bay. Word on the street is that Biggie, he's a well-known thief in the area. We are told that Biggie, he specialized in breaking into houses and business places and stealing stuffs. Our information is that Friday afternoon, a guy confronted Biggie and both of them were engaged in a heated argument. Moments later, Biggie, he left his home and went to a shop nearby to buy some foodstuffs. He bought the foodstuffs and he was on his way back to go home when he was confronted by a hoodlum who opened gunfire at him, hitting him in his face. Biggie, he fell to the ground and the hoodlum, he made good his escape. Biggie, he died on the spot. The police, they were called and when they processed this crime scene, four 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be one of the first to be notified. Now, in the final story for today, I posted that young man's photo on Facebook this morning and some persons were saying the same things about him. The fact that he was very humble. So, persons might be wondering or asking themselves, if he was so humble, why was he shot and killed? Because, you know, some people, you know, them always say you have to involve in a something. Not true, but I know so you go. So I'm going to tell you why. But before I tell you why, if you are new to the channel, what I'm about to say might be a surprise to you because you might be saying, Papa is careless or giving out too much information. But no worries. I am not stupid. You got it? So as a child, yeah man, as a child, I used to live at Johnson Town in Lucy. I used to be the goalkeeper for a football team at Johnson Town in Lucy. I remember when I was living in Johnson Town. This time of the year was the best time of the year for us youngsters because on a Sunday like today, one week before Christmas, we would be collecting a lot of gifts at the Canaan Chapel Church in Johnson Town. As a child, apart from a little quarreling sometimes, that's it. People fight, yes, but that's it. When we were young, we used to make fish guns to shoot fish or catapult to shoot birds. But these youngsters, most of them, them have access to a gun. So the young man on your screen, his name is Joshua Aaron Richards, but he was popularly known as, well, I see some people calling him Beesman. So, if I am wrong, please correct me, but I am told that he's called Beesman. He was born on May 19, 1999, 24 years old, and he lived at Johnson Town. We are learning that Friday night, December 15. Beesman, he was at a bar in the community when a guy known as Crazy, asked Beesman to buy him a drink. Beesman told him that he had no money to buy him any drink. He told Beesman to put it on his bill. Beesman told him that he did not have no bill in the bar. We are told that as a result, Crazy, he started quarreling with Beesman. So a heated argument developed between both of them. Some persons are saying it got physical. Some are saying it didn't. Well, either way, 
it is said that crazy he left out of the bar but he had his plans Beesman, he then left out of the bar driving his nissan ad wagon motor car to go home on reaching his gate we are told that Beesman, he was involved in a minor accident with another vehicle he parked his car came out and was about to talk to the driver when crazy who was waiting on him stepped up and started arguing with Beesman again crazy he then pulled a gun and opened gunfire hitting Beesman to his left side Beesman fell to the ground and crazy he ran away like the little coward he is making good his escape persons rushed with Beesman to the Noel Holmes Hospital in Lucy where he died shortly after arrival so crazy crazy you are now wanted by the police the mayhem continues blessed love everybody tell a friend for tell a friend for tell a friend about papa news link and pnl blog tv like subscribe and share quick silver sin if we just unite what a country this will be if we just unite jamaica Criminals, they